I mean, that's banks, uh, by the way, and uh, there's a positive view coming in. Uh, ties in nicely, of course, with uh, the overall belief and uh, sort of uh, perception that, you know, this is a sector which is still not uh, very outrageously, val outrageously valued. Uh, and uh, the building blocks are there for the space to do well over a period of time. Rana Konkar is with us, co-equity uh, fund manager and head of research at PPFAS. Rana, good afternoon. Good to have you with us here. Prashant, this side. You know, I, I just want to start by talking about uh, not, not uh, equities and what you're doing uh, here, but on the option side. I mean, you guys bought uh, uh, December call options, right? And you'd explained that in your fact sheet and your earlier communication to investors, etc. as well. So just wanted a sense of uh, what, what uh, that is about. I wanted to ask you this the last time you were on because it's, I think this is now about uh, at least 20, 25 days uh, old, uh, what, what you've done. So just talk to us about that. What, what is, because this is looking through elections and budget and everything else. Go on. Hi, Prashant. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, definitely. So we took a very small position. Uh, we bought calls for uh, the Nifty. And uh, the simple funda is that if, we, if the market goes up, uh, then the calls are valuable. We can sell them at a profit. If the markets stay where they are or they are flat or go down, uh, all we lose is the option premium that we have paid. And uh, the trade essentially that like Rajiv has mentioned in the fact sheet is the downside risk is protected where the upside is up to us as how far the market can go. So it's a very simple trade. It's a very small position. Uh, it's a way, other way of deploying your cash uh, because uh, otherwise we don't have a directional view of the market is. But this just gives you a little bit of optionality on the upside and locks in the downside for you. Mm. And you, you, you've explained, right, when the interest in, uh, through money market investments perhaps would pay the premium for this one. So, uh, so that actually, it's pretty simple but smart in that sense. But is it also a directional kind? Does it uh, talk to the directional view that by market should be, uh, you know, not meaningfully, but it should be higher from where we are by the, by the end of the year? I mean, that's, of course, the bet, really, right? It's very hard to predict. That's the reason you do the bet, right? Uh, because if you see the implied volatility on that option, it has been very low. That means the market expects to be flat, uh, but it's very difficult to predict. That's the reason you get into such kind of a trade where uh, you take the upside if it works in your favor and downside is protected uh, to that extent. Mm. Uh, Ronak, uh, afternoon. Have you increased your cash holding in your portfolio in the flexi cap? It has been about 15% for a while now. Uh, as okay. per the April factor, it is the same. Okay. Mm. So it's not that you've turned incrementally cautious in the markets. You're just looking to hedge it. Yeah. Any changes that you've made in your portfolio in the last two months, considering the volatility that we've seen? Not too many changes, uh, but incrementally we have added to some of the stocks where we found valuations to be attractive, uh, which includes mm. the banks, which includes uh, things like Bajaj Holdings. Uh, but again, the, there are few and far places between now to invest. Uh, valuations have been creeping up uh, for the past couple of years and we aren't comfortable at deploying a large amount of the cash today as well. Uh, yeah, so we remain cautious, but although we are deployed in companies where we think the valuations are still reasonable. Mm -hmm. Interesting new look as well, uh, Ronak. Uh, you know, after a while, <laughs> sporting a new uh, look. Interesting. Pretty much suits you, I think so. But, uh, you know, talking about deploying some money, someone who's ready in case there is volatility post this election verdict is y'all. Y'all are sitting on 15% cash and... You know, you're ready to deploy, so that's good news for you all. But what you'll have, where you'll have deployed money has been Kotak Mahindra Bank. It got a bit of a rap on the knuckles, uh, you know, in the last uh, couple of months or so, 45 days or so, within the last 45 days. And you all have actually bought into that stock. And now I believe banks is closer on 20% of your total mix. So you're betting on the private sector names and some of these names that haven't really performed, you expect them to outperform, outperform I'm guessing. So private sector banks, if you see, uh, say pre-COVID to today, not much has changed in the valuations of these banks. Uh, however, these banks have grown. Uh, and it's been a long-term trajectory for growth for private sector banks or well-run banks, that I should say. And they have performed on spot uh, wherever we see that uh, the loan growth is concerned. The only debate is whether how fast they will grow. That's anybody's guess. But I think the valuations where they are, I think any upside in growth uh, that comes in through either loan growth or even the fee uh, income that they earn, I think it's positive for uh, private sector banks. Interesting. You know, because uh, both these two banks, HDFC Bank and Kotak Mahindra Bank, you'll have both of them in there. And valuations, you know, are the cheapest you've seen in multiple years because the stock prices haven't moved at all. So let's see how that call goes. The other, you know, sector that I'm looking at is some of these stock marketplaces, so to call it, Motilal Oswal, UTI, AMC, 
I think you'll have offloaded uh, or you'll have trimmed your stake at least in both these two holdings. Tell us more. Yeah, we have to be cautious about such capital market exposed businesses because they tend to be very cyclical and uh, we don't know where the cycle will be, but if the valuations become stretched very fast in a short period of time, we have to be a little cautious. So we have trimmed them at the edges just to uh, prevent a large exposure to these sectors. Oh. Is this uh, on the back of, uh, I mean, some have spoken about uh, potential uh, sort of, you know, regula regulation which may uh, maybe aimed at generally tempering down all of the activity, especially on the FNO side. Uh, is, is that uh, is that something also that you have in mind when you do this? Not really, but over the over a period of time, we have seen the market go up such sharply in a short period of time. So I think it's better to be cautious uh, when you're dealing with uh, such cyclicality. If you're looking at a broking business or an AMC business, they actually are cyclical. The yields will be very, very cyclical uh, because the AUMs can uh, shuffle, the market volume can go down if a market falls. Uh, so it's better to be cautious at uh, peak market or if you think that the market has run up very fast. That's the only reason. We still own some of these positions. So it's not like an entire sell-off. Mm. Mm. Although, in a, in a, uh, this is, uh, you know, you ask anyone, this is structural uh, bull market, right? Uh, <laughs> cyclical companies in a structural bull market. The hope is, I mean, this is, uh, you know, what we're seeing here perhaps will do, uh, continue to do very well over a, over a, over a period of time. Uh, Anything else that you've uh, added, anything else uh, that uh, at the margin uh, that you are starting to like? Uh, and also, I mean, you know, what will you buy with the cash in case there is some volatility, in case opportunity arises? Will you add on to existing positions or uh, is, is there something else? What we will buy actually will be revealed in the fact sheet when it comes out. Uh, see, in the last, uh, in the last bull markets, if you've seen, when we were sitting on cash, uh, it really helped us uh, to double down when the market's corrected. The recent example is the COVID crash. Uh, before that, if you go back even till December uh, 2017, Jan 2018, we were sitting on 30% cash because that time the market was at such a peak valuation. And that time we were fully deployed in our global portfolio as well, up to 30%. Uh, so yeah, these things are, uh, because the valuations dictate, uh, we have to make sure that we guard ourselves by not chasing these high valuations. Uh, so cash will be deployed. So a couple of good ideas we uh, come across, the cash will suddenly go down and you will see that two new names are added or existing names have gotten additional allocation because the valuations were uh, very attractive. So yeah, it depends on what is really attractive at that point in time. Can't really commit in advance as to where we will invest. <laughs> But Ronak, the inference from this is today you have a 15% cash holding, but at times you've even had a 30% holding in a cash position when you anticipate a bigger crash. So it doesn't mean that, so the takeaway could be that you don't see a big correction in the market, which is why you've got a average level of cash holding. We are not anticipating any crash, uh, to be very fair. Uh, if you look at the portfolio, these are reasonably priced companies. The whole point is to not chase uh, very, very steep valuations. The company's earnings may not grow. Like uh, Prashant said, it's very easy to forget a cycle, right? We might think everything is a structural story, the long-term growth, but there are these in-between cycles to achieve that growth. Sometimes we'll have to face a down cycle and sometimes it will be an up cycle. So because keeping the cyclicality in mind, you have to be very cautious as to how much you pay for the same opportunity of growth. So we're not denying that the market will not grow, the companies will not grow, earnings will not grow, but we are just being cautious because we are not very comfortable with the valuations we have to pay. And that is the way the market is. It's not going to be always in your favor. You always will have market areas where which are very expensive and some areas will be reasonably priced or very, very cheap. Uh, so we will stay where the cheapness is and uh, we will sell where the uh, expensive valuations are. Mm. And I think you're still bullish on one of those stocks that has done pretty okay, Power Grid. I think that's the second largest holding that you'll have, right? So you'll continue to build on to that position. So power sector theme, if you have seen over the past uh, couple of years, has been uh, going up like crazy. If you see capital expenditure, uh, little businesses also doing very well because on the back of large order books. But power grid is a different business. It essentially gets its cash flows from uh, consistently keeping the grid on and expanding the grid over a period of time. So it's more of a disciplined growing player. It has had a good history and track record of execution. They have good cash flows. They pay out good dividends. Uh, as long as you're not overpaying for the opportunity, I think a company, a utility like Power Grid, is a very decent business to own. Okay, all right. Uh, Ronak, thanks a lot for joining in. So key takeaway is then you're sitting on some cash of around 15% or uh, in case uh, opportunity provides itself, you look to get in. 
Private sector banks is something that you like. Power Grid is one of the top positions over there as well. And you've taken some money off the table on Motilal Oswal and UTI AMC. Thanks a lot for joining in, Ronak. Prashant. No, I mean, actually, on the power yeah. thing, 